Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Halifax Raiders Draft of Glory franchise mode here in NHL 24. So in last episode, we simulated the entire year three season and we finally got our first one under belt. We won seven games this year and also had a couple overtime losses. So our team took a big step, especially on the offensive front because you could see Mauricio Wilm led the team with 90 points, which was pretty damn awesome. So this team is starting to find himself offensively. Defensively, we do still need a bit of work, but you could see with like the addition of Lehman, our offense started to get much better. Bonikrovsky had 50 points playing with those top guys. So should be an interesting season coming up for year number four. I think uh, Wilm should easily be able to get into the 40 goal range. He's now hit 30 goals in back-to-back -back seasons. So he should be starting to get to that 40 goal range, maybe even 100 points next year even if this team doesn't even have that much wins, which is pretty nuts. So very excited for this offseason, obviously, to add more young pieces to this team and start uh, building up the foundation of the core a little bit more. So so very excited for that. But anyways, we do have a lot of comments to go over being a, this a draft episode because uh, we do have a little bit of a tough decision on what we want to go after draft-wise. So let me actually go ahead here and change over to my comment mode and let's uh, go through some comments so i won't go through all of them but basically a lot of you guys were saying to potentially go for ahonen at the third overall pick um and then some of you guys were saying oh we should go maybe for mckenna and then also when i was talking with nick in the, the discord he was saying about potentially going for sterling so there's like it's a really tough decision on what we want to actually take with this third overall pick that we have because once again we didn't win the draft lottery but basically we have a choice between Sterling as you can see who is a two-way forward is similar to Patrick Kane which means maybe he's a pass first type of player but he does have really good shooting categories as you can see we also have Gavin McKenna which I'm not leaning towards really because I'm not into real players that much in the type of franchise mode and then a lot of you guys were saying Liam Ahonen might be the type of guy to take because he is a playmaker and he'd be like the last thing we need for that top line. So it's a very tough decision on what we end up going with with our next pick, our first pick of this draft. But basically, uh, let's go through a couple other comments not regarded to the draft. So the first one is from Saturn Otaku who says, I'm going out on a limb and say you'll make the playoffs at least once before Wilms' eight-year contract ends. So that's uh, an interesting thing. Um, so we gave Wilm an eight-year contract extension that kicks in at the start of this upcoming season. He says that we will be making the playoffs at least once before it ends in, I guess, 2033 around. So, or actually longer than that. So uh, that's a very interesting prediction. I don't know if that is going to be the case. I think it could honestly be because Lehman should be in the 90s by then. Kolsnick should be like high 80s, maybe uh, into the 90s as well. And then hopefully our depth is starting to fill out by that point. The next comment is from Ezra Hamburg, who says, Well, after three years, the Halifax Raiders have finally achieved their first franchise win. Their overall record now is 7, 232 and 7. How fitting and how fitting is it that the first win comes against the Coyotes? Feels like payback to the Coyotes after shafting you in the draft lottery last season. LOL. And oh yeah, that's true. I forgot about them winning the lottery over us. So that was a good payback. And uh, yeah, the fact that our record is 723 and uh, not 23, 7232 in seven after three seasons is absolutely hilarious. The question is, are we actually going to be able to get that back over 500 at some stage? Like, are we going to win some presence trophies in this series? Because that honestly could happen, but also we might not win those type of trophies. Who knows? And then the last comment I want to go over is from Dustin Mould, who says that plus three chemistry with capable line mates helped out a lot. Team got tired of losing, and yeah, it, it definitely did that top line because uh, without that 90 points from Wilm, we probably would have been, like, not winning games. So anyways, those were the comments I got in last episode that were not reflected of the draft. Now, basically with this pick, though, like I was saying, I don't really know who I'm going to be going for. I don't think McKenna is going to be one of them, so I'm going to unpit him. It's probably between Sterling and Ahonen. I would honestly lean to maybe Sterling just because he's projected to go earlier, but it looks like on paper, Ahonen actually might be the better overall player in terms of that because he has two A-plus categories while Sterling only has the one. So I would maybe lean towards Ahonen, but I'm still really not 100% sure because obviously Wilm could play center and he could also play right wing. So Ahonen would be locked into center and then that means we would have to move Wilm to the wing for next season. If we bring in Sterling, 
Uh, he could play on the right side, and Wilm could still be down the middle and potentially win some Selkies and stuff like that down the road. But it's a very tough decision. Uh, but I might leave it up to a wheel spin. I want to see what the wheel spin says first. So let me open up my browser here. Actually, wait a second. So I think I'm going to leave it up to a wheel spin, but I honestly might go against a wheel spin. Like, this is like one of the toughest decisions we have. So let's uh, see what the wheel is thinking when it comes to our pick. It is leaning towards Ahunen. Well, I think that's got to be it. I guess I think Ahunen might honestly be the better of the two in terms of overall rating and all that stuff. So I think we are going to go for Ahunen. I was leaning more towards uh, taking um, taking Sterling just because he's projected to go earlier. But Ahunen looks like the real deal. He's a playmaker like you guys are saying. And yeah, he only has one A- minus attribute while Sterling has two. So Ahunen technically should be the best player out of this first round. That is not... He actually might be the second best player in the draft, or tied for the first best, actually, with uh, Tesselios. So he might be as good as the first overall pick, which is really good. So yeah, we're definitely going Ahun in here. We're going to go with the Super Swede, and then Wilm likely will be on the wing next season, just because I don't want to have both those guys playing center only. I want to have uh, Wilm on the wing, I think, because he's the shooter, so... Let's get into this draft and take that playmaker and also see what the AI ends up grabbing in these first few picks. Hopefully Ahunen doesn't go off the board earlier. If that ends up happening, then we'll definitely go for Sterling. But um, if Sterling is still uh, is the only one left, we'll definitely go for him, I think. But uh, I was also, when I was talking with Nick in the Discord, he was saying stuff about Sterling actually fits the exact same type of thing that Wilm does. So that's why I was kind of leaning towards Sterling in it a little bit. But Ahanen is actually a good fit as well, but not as good. So uh, yeah, let's see what Dallas takes at number one. Kind of crazy that they have the first overall pick. They take Tecelios, who's an 83 overall. So if he's an 83 overall, hypothetically Ahanen should be an 83 as well. This guy's got crazy good shooting, so another guy that's going to be going up there with against Wilm and also Morozov from Arizona in terms of goal scoring, probably in the league, which is kind of nuts. St. Louis at two. This is where it gets interesting. Takes Unila, so they do take the defenseman in anti Unila. Hmm. He's got to stick him up. Interesting. Very good skater for a defenseman, too. So that's a decent pick for them, but they could have honestly went for a better player here because. We are definitely going to be getting, I think, an 83 overall here with Ahunen. Very excited for this guy. He does not take a lot of shots based on his, at least his stats in the SHL. So I don't know if that's going to transpire to the NHL. Like He might be a pure playmaker, which would be actually really good because then he could set up Wilm quite a bit. So Liam Ahunen, welcome aboard. Let's see how good you are. 80 overall only. Damn, he looked like he was actually going to be better than... Uh, Unila. I thought he was going to be as good as Tecelios based on those stats, but apparently not. Still an 80 overall is pretty good. Um, he has 87 passing, 86 offensive awareness. Once those get up there, that would be great. His shooting is actually pretty good too for a playmaker. 84 is across the board. Um, and he has shock and all and third eye. That third eye is going to be nice if it gets to gold because, yeah, third eye is a really good ability. It's like the best uh, uh, passing ability other than tape to tape, so... Really like that pick still. Obviously, he's only listed as a depth forward right now, but he's going to be playing as our top line center next season. How's his face-offs, actually? 79. Yeah, it's pretty much just as good as Wilms. Not too bad. Let's see the other guys as well, because might as well. Svoboda went next at 4th to Columbus. He's also an 80 overall. We weren't even going to go for this guy. But yeah, this is a pretty solid uh, early stage of the draft. Then Ruberg, uh, Rubrog, uh how do you even pronounce his last name? Ryan... Rubroic, I think he's a real player. Five abilities. He ends up going. Yeah, I think this guy's a real player based on his shooting category and all that. But he goes to Nashville, which means still McKenna's on the board at six, which is kind of nuts. He might go to the Sharks like he was in our last series in Chicago. He doesn't. Sterling goes. He's a 79 with all alone. So this is what we just missed out on. He definitely doesn't have as good passing, and he has around the same shooting as Ahan, and so we made the right decision. So good job, guys. There you go. And he could also technically play center. He's got good face-off stats for left wing, right wing, but oh well. Why is Gavin McKenna still not off the on the board yet? He's going to go at like number 8. Yeah, why does Steel for the Flames? Jeez. Gavin McKenna goes in at 8. Isn't there still uh, that one other dude? Or no? I don't think so. 
Let's him to our next pick, though, and see what we can get in these later rounds because I don't remember if there's anything good in him. Um, hmm. We do have Dixon pinned. He's a guaranteed top six forward. Not really the best looking one on paper. What was our draft board saying at this stage? Let's see. Uh, Lincoln Linden or Buzanus. Okay, let's take a look at those dudes. Lincoln Linden or Buzanus. It shouldn't be too far off the board here. There's also Calder. Ooh, I do like Ariel Calder's look, kind of. These guys aren't guaranteed is the only problem. Where is the boost news, dude? Wasn't he supposed to go at this stage? Oh, those are the scout recommended ones. I don't even see boost news. I must be completely blind. Uh, let's see. Do I see the boost news? <laughs> That's such a fun last name to say. I do not. This guy looks like he could be decent, but he might not be. No weakness. Ooh, Marion Demetra, though. Marion Demetra might be NHL ready, and he's a defenseman. We need defenders. Marion Demetra is the pick. I know there's a guaranteed top six forward there, but Marion Demetra, if he's that good, could be like his top four. That's like a 78 overall, and that would go a long way in terms of helping us out defensively, which is a big priority right now. So, Marion Demetra, welcome aboard. And he's exactly that. 78 overall, medium top four, early second round pick. Let's go. That's a huge one. He'll be a great defensive defenseman to have in our blue line next season. Which means somebody's going to be on his way out on the defensive core. It's probably going to be one of those low 70s or medium 70s that we drafted last season. That's a nice pick. He's got good defensive awareness, good shot blocking, stick checking. Like This guy's going to be definitely... Nice to put next to maybe an offensive defenseman if we could ever find one. But there is Marion Demetra. Did we make the right call with him? Yeah, I think we did because Higgins is only top nine. Same as Sloan. Erskine's top six. Uh, Holt was top four as well, but much lower overall. Wise. I like that pick a lot. That was a good steal. Considering we didn't even have him pinned last episode. Uh, what else could we get here? There's a guaranteed starter in Whitmore, but do we need another goaltender? We already have three in our system. We could draft another so we have all four. Or we could try and go for more defenders to try and get that blue line to being better. Is there anybody that I pinned at this stage? I'm curious. Oh, there's Wolniski. He's not supposed to go to like two rounds from now. Um, hmm. Low top six is he's really never play good. This guy looks like he could be decent though for low top six. Uh, McNeely... Same type of boat. These low top sixes and low top fours actually look okay. This guy's guaranteed to have good shooting categories and all that. The only thing that's his weakness is his skating and defense, but he's 19 years old, so he's a bit of an overager as a low top six. Uh, I don't know if I like overagers in that sense, but he does look pretty good on paper. Let's go for the overager here. Yeah, let's go for the overager. He looks like he has got some pretty good uh, abilities. Like, he should be maybe, like, in the high 60s, which means he might end up developing into being something for a low top six, but let's take a chance with this guy. 63 overall playmaker, not bad. It is a winger playmaker that's got decent passing and all that, so maybe he becomes something, maybe he doesn't, but uh, there is our third round pick. Now here at 100, we'll probably take that guy I had pinned, likely. Let's see. Wolniski, yeah, we might as well take a chance with Wolniski because he could potentially be a low lead steal, so let's take a chance with him. Welcome aboard. Low top six, damn it. That sucks. We thought he was going to be a low... Uh, he has actually pretty good shooting as well. That's good. Maybe he'll become a good AHL player too. But now we need to find ourselves some more defenders for sure because I think defense is our main priority kind of in a way. But it doesn't look like there's going to be anybody good on the defensive side of things. Like there's medium 7th D's going at this stage. Like the draft class has definitely dipped off quite a bit. Gerald Gallagher. Uh, let's take a chance with Gallagher. He's an overager as well. Low top 6 again. Jeez, man. Why am I finding all these low top 6s? He's got good shooting as well. I like that these guys at least have good shooting. Because maybe that means they'll uh, be able to be usable at the AHL level at least. Um, let's see if we could find any steals here, though. 
because now we're in the late parts of this draft. Anybody with a good attribute that's guaranteed. Jeez, this looks like a terrible draft the rest of it, though. Like, at least we got our good players early on. Uh, this guy might be intriguing. Mikhail Gortz might be four years out, but he might honestly be a low six as well. I'll pin him for now. We'll come back to him at some point. Just trying to see if we could find maybe a good steal based on these attributes. Uh, maybe Latikainen. He is an overager as well. Hmm. Uh, there's that B minus in this guy, Voloshenko. Let's uh, pin these, see what he's got here. So we could go for Voloshenko already. He's probably guaranteed medium bottom six, though. So five years out. Gortz looks like he could be four years out, which is intriguing to me, but he's supposed to go undrafted. So I honestly could take him next round. And then there's Latikainen, who is five years out. That's also supposed to probably go undrafted. Uh, let's just take a chance with uh, Voloshenko first, and we'll probably go for Gortz and then Latikainen with our last pick. Because at this stage, this draft does not look that good. So Voloshenko, welcome aboard. Medium bottom, uh, bottom six, uh, two-way forward. Uh, it is what it is. Might be more of an HL player. Does have actually have some good attributes as well. Like I kind of like that these guys actually look decent still. Like for not having a good potential, he's got like okay attributes, like in the 70 range. It's not like all in the 60s or below. Our next pick here, which is round seven, so actually we can only take one of these two guys remaining. We're gonna probably go for wow. The other guy went off the board already. Hmm. So I guess we'll go for uh, Mikhail Gortz, which is kind of an intriguing pick, just because it's looking like he could be four years out, but he might not be that good. So Mikhail Gortz, welcome aboard. Low bottom six, yikes, oof. He looked like he was going to be better than that, but not so much. Once again, has decent attributes, but it's another winger playmaker, so maybe we could end up utilizing him next to a good sniper in the AHL. But there is our draft. I would say not our best draft, but Ahan and Demetra are great picks. And then after that, it kind of just drops off a little bit, but those low top sixes, maybe they're wild cards and they end up making it at some stage, but Ahun and Demetra are really good ones for our team. Especially, I'd say, Dimitra, just because he's a great fit for our blue line. Ahanen is going to be a good fit for that top line as well. Like, I'm very excited to see what he could do next to some really good players. Um, yeah, let's uh, leave the AHL coaches and staff. I'll get the AI to re-sign whoever they want. Uh, but, because we don't need to focus on the AHL head coach really that much at the moment. Because we don't have a full AHL roster yet. We will at some stage, though. Okay, so let's get to this resign stage here. We do got some RFAs to actually deal with. We got 52 million in cap space. Let's sign all of our unsigned guys. So we got how much forwards? Wow, we got six forwards, one defenseman in this draft. So we definitely need to start targeting more defenders. Hopefully there's some in the upcoming drafts. But six forwards and a defenseman. So we could let go of some players from the minor leagues, which is good. We definitely need to hold on to a lot of the defenders, though. But yeah, I think uh, Smirnov, for example, he could end up being like Sherov in a sense because of the fact he's a high overall already. We did draft a lot of overagers, so maybe some of them will end up being able to develop faster because they're a little bit older. I don't know. So there is those guys. RFA-wise, we got to go to the bottom of this list here. Uh, we do need to let go of one defenseman, so let's actually do it in UFAs and let go of a UFA defender. And we'll let go of all these forwards here as well. Just because we have some guys that we just drafted getting in, so. And we'll also let go of one of the RFA forwards as well. So this dude, boom, you're gone. And then we will qualify all these guys. As long as they are the two-way deals. If they're the ones that want 15 million, I could still give them 15 million. Ooh, this Bjork guy still wants over a million, which is kind of weird. But we do need to uh, get to the cap floor, so we might have to sign ourselves still a cap oil. That way, uh, Wilm's contract doesn't get inflated. Oh, this guy wants 15 million, so he must have been the one we were paying a lot to next last season. So we'll do it again to him. That way, we're kind of close to the cap floor. 
Um, I'm okay with giving these guys a billion as well. Might as well. That way we get closer to the cap floor, like I was saying. Jacobson, 880, that's good. Gerbowski wants 3 million bucks. Oof. But then again, that's as a qualifying offer. Regularly, he wants just a two-way deal. So let's uh, keep signing Gerbowski up here because he's one of our actual picks. And, wow, Rollison wants a one-way deal. Hmm. I have to give it to him, though, since we drafted him. But that's interesting. This is qualified. Those guys, what about you? Finley wants a two-way deal, so we'll give him that. That's good for me. I'll come back to Rolison in a second. I think it's because rollison has been actually been producing relatively well. Yeah, because Palin as well is in the same boat. Okay, what about Emelin? Emelin only wants a two-way, so we'll get Emelin on a two-way. And then it comes down to Palin and Rolison. Goalie-wise, we do need still Gar for one more year, so we'll do that. And then we'll sign Dave Cameron as well to a two-way deal. Then we'll go over to UFAs, make sure goalies are good, which they are. Let's advance today and see if we get all those guys in. And then, yeah, those other RFAs, like I said, we will need to maybe qualify them. Let's see. Okay, so we got all those guys in. You want 2.4. Such a lot of money for a 67. We're going to have to probably end up just qualifying these guys, but I can't give them 2.6 is the thing. Qualifying offers 2.6. This is just 2.4. Um, can I try the 85% trick here? Let's try the 85% trick on uh, Palin and all that because I don't feel like giving him 2.475. So it'd be nice to kind of knock his contract down a bit because he's kind of asking for a bit too much. Not that it really matters at this stage early on, but uh, let's times that by 0.85. Maybe I could get him down to 2.110. Or 25 actually somewhere around this it's a bit of an overpayment but these guys deserve it palin's been actually not that bad of a player and then what do you want oh you're very cheap we could easily just give him a three-year deal just because of the fact that uh, we won't have necessarily like there'll be more roster spots open by the time his contract ends so we'll just give uh, rolson a three-year deal because i'm okay with that it's not gonna break our bank that much so and both of them have accepted perfect Okay, so we got all those guys in. We do still have a lot of cap space. So we might still have to sign a cap whale if we have the roster spots. Do we have the roster spots? Oh, we might not have the roster spots for all these RFAs. Because we are now at 44 to 50. Actually, that might be including the RFAs. It probably is. Um, let's send to free agency, though. And see our RFAs accept and then see if we need still to spend some money. Because I don't want the uh, contracts getting inflated. So. Okay, let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got here. Did we get all our RFAs in already or did they not accept? Oofing's still there. We still got 51 million in cap space. Hmm. Yeah, we still have 51 million in cap space, so we definitely need to sign ourselves a cap whale. Um, so let's go to free agency and sign two cap whales to 15 million dollar contracts for a year. <laughs> Seems weird doing that, but we have to do it. Uh, let's sign this dude. We had him already, I think. We'll just give you a one-year deal, and we're not giving you 19 million. We'll give you 18 million. Yeah, we'll give you 18 million, and then we'll give a defenseman like somebody that doesn't want an ELC. There's so much undrafted guys here in the free agent pool. Let's see what we got. Oh, there's a 22-year-old. That might be okay. No, he needs locked into a two-way as well. There we go. There's a 24-year-old. There we go. Okay, now we're just going to give this guy like $16 million, and then we should be closer to the cap floor. We might not be at the cap floor yet, so we might still need to sign one more, but we'll see once we get uh, some guys signed up. So let's, uh, let's continue to advance up to next season. There's those guys accepting. Our R phase should be accepting soon, too. There's one of them. We're just waiting on the other guy. There you go. 
Do we still need to uh, get to the cap floor is the question. Are we still below it? No, we're above the cap floor. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we're literally a little tiny bit above it, which is good. That is good indeed. Okay. Now we can set up our team for next season. Actually, should I look for a new head coach for this team yet? Hmm. I was debating about doing that this off season. So let's uh, look at the coaching options out there. See if there's actually I should check at the start of the season. That way we already have a good read on what our team fit is in roster. So yeah, I'll wait till the start of the season and see if there's a new coach out there that I could potentially offer a contract to for these young guys. And that way we could get the best out of our top prospects or top players, I should say, even because they're not really prospects at this stage. We've got to make sure all our drafted players are in the lineup. But if we have to make some tough decisions, we might have to send some guys to the AHL next uh, episode. So you guys are going to help me with that. So, let's go to roster moves here. See who needs to be called up. And if there's roster space. Cameron and Goalie both should be in the NHL technically. But Cameron's much better overall wise. So this year, maybe Dave Cameron is our backup. And then Goalie's going to be in the AHL for a year. That way he can get a little bit of development. Don't mind that at all. Defensively, we need to send down Korka because he's not ours. And we will call up because Hivnikov because he is ours. I think McLaren's going to get a year in the AHL, which is okay. So, yeah, McLaren's going to get a year in the AHL because we don't want to scratch him, obviously. Because or else he won't get growth. Wow, Bonacrowski went up to a 71 after that season. That's nice. Uh, Darcy Watton is kind of an interesting one. Maybe one year in the AHL would be okay for him. But, let me see. Pistic needs to go down. Smirnov's our own. Mahikalo. Is not ours. Let me see. Is there anybody else down there that needs to be called up though? Gallagher's ours. Voloshenko is ours. Gortz is. Um, hmm. Yeah, we have a full roster, so I can't call up uh, Voloshenko or whoever the lowest overall guy is, which is technically Voloshenko. Who looks better on paper to me to be in the NHL? Hmm. Jarl Gallagher looks pretty good. Yeah, I think it's going to be Gallagher. I might honestly keep Watton down in the AHL, though. Yeah, I think Watton gets another year in the AHL, maybe. Or first year in the AHL. And then we should also maybe call up one other player. Let me just see. Do we have enough players on our roster? Maybe some of these guys are getting scratched, so we might have to actually send down multiple players. <clears throat> okay, let's go to head coach preferred lines. Uh, who is scratched at the moment? Gallagher and Grabowski. Uh, I might have to take Pitten out of the lineup. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to take Pitten out of the lineup, I think, here. Yeah, Pitten's going to get sent down, I think. Because I want Grabowski in still. Yeah, Gallagher and Pitten, I think, get sent down. Which is okay. They'll get more ice time that way, and hopefully they'll get some development playing in the AHL. So Gallagher and it was Pitten. Send you guys down to the AHL. That should be good. Now let's go to see. Yeah, we don't have any scratch players. That's good. Um, let's set up our lines now. So we want Wilm on the right side. That makes it a plus five because obviously the power four playmaker sniper combination. That's a really good looking top line. I like that. Oh yeah. And then the second line looks actually pretty good too. Sheroff jumped to a 79. Holy shiza, man. Is this guy actually that good? Because look at that passing category. Holy crap, man. Why is this guy developing like a crazy ass motherfucker? Holy shit. Oh my god. I know he had a great first, like, second season, but holy crap, man. This guy's a remarkable player. I have to move Stage into the wing, though, because Stajan's not good at faceoffs. Yeah. So Sherov is going to be uh, hopefully setting up Ponikarovsky, which is a great second line. Uh, I do like Petterman, but he's on the third line. He might have to take a little bit of time to develop, so that's okay having him down there, I think. Next to some good passers. I like that. And a fourth line of Rolison. So Rolison's getting demoted even further. And then you have Markov and Finley. Okay. Defensively. Uh, we do have two good right-handed defensemen now, so they'll have to be on different pairings. 
Oh man, Palin. We'll put Palin up to the top. Actually, maybe Mayor to the top. Something like that. Our team is definitely starting to come together. We have a full roster of players we drafted now. I love it. I like it. This is actually a really cool looking team. Especially this top line, obviously. But you add like Ahan into this top line. This top line should do really well. Wilm could hit 100 points this year. The second line is actually kind of intriguing too. Stajan, I don't really like as a second line kind of guy. Petterman actually might be better there. And then we can put Stajan as a third liner. Because he's a two-way forward. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I'll do that instead. Yeah, I really like the looks of this team. I don't really want to put Grabowski to the fourth line. But uh, Finley's a grinder, so that's why I'm keeping him there. I like this team. It looks good. Let's make sure our power play is set up as well the way we want it. I think that actually looks like a pretty solid first unit. Second unit looks pretty good too. I do want Palin to be on the power play technically. Um, so I am going to take Rolison off. So that way Palin can play on it. I know it makes it a minus, but Palin's been one of the best players in this early going. So, um, And then we will go for this unit. We'll go Wilman Lehman, sure. That's fine with me. And then Ahunen and not Stajan. Not Stajan. We should go for Petterman on this one. Yeah, Stajan's a two-way forward. I would rather have a power forward playing with the playmaker. Yo, this is an interesting team. Very interesting team. Yeah, I like this team a lot. I think this team definitely will win double-digit games this season. That's my prediction right now. I think 10 to 15 wins based on that top line alone. So there's that. Do we want to find a new coach, though? We do have pretty good chemistry across the board, but do we want to look for a new head coach? This guy right now is a 64% team fit. Let's take a look and see if there's anything else out there. And then I'll be it for this episode at that stage. We also should take a look at the new players, actually, too. So we'll do that. But is there any new coaches that might be better for us? 65 in Griffin Addison. If you guys see any coaches you want me to go after, I'll go over them in next episode. And maybe we'll change our coach. So that's 165. Not really seeing much else out there. This is this also this Jawson guy. But eh. He's an AHL head coach. Yeah, I don't really see any other coaches out there that I want. I should actually go to best lines also in the AHL quickly. So that way we have our prospects in. Because I don't want them being scratched in the AHL. Because that would be even worse. But yeah, I think this upcoming season is going to be our best season yet for sure. Um, so Gortzen, Watton, and Gallagher need to be in. Let's just take out random guys. I don't really give a crap on who I'm taking out. But let's take out anybody that I didn't draft. Let's see. Let's take out you for Gallagher. And then we'll take Oofing out for Gortz. Perfect. All those guys are in. And then defensively, we don't need to put anybody in. Okay. Same with goalie-wise. There we go. That is it. So let's take a look at what uh, those um, new players we just drafted look like. So Ahan and all that. I am curious on that. And then I'll be it for this episode once we see that. So starting off with Liam Ahanen, who's going to have probably a rookie of the year season, likely playing with Wilm and with Lehman. What is he looking like? He's looking like this. Let's go to his head for a second so we can go to the beard. And we can get a closer look at his face. There we go. This is what he looks like. Pretty basic. Nothing too crazy. We're in number 82. Love to see it. So there is Ahinen. Uh, then we also drafted... Anybody else in the NHL? Smirnov. Smirnov is going to be making his debut, I think, this year, right? Yeah, Smirnov is an overager who's going to be making it. I think it's good to have an overager in the lineup anyways, because that way he's maybe developing faster. Because if he doesn't, he's going to just not develop. So this is what Pavel Smirnov looks like. Pretty basic look to him. He does also have a wild man beard once he gets to the playoff time. <laughs> number 5 for a forward is an interesting choice. It kind of reminds me of like Bobby Ryan wearing number 6. Then we head to Defenders. We only have one new addition, that being Marion Demetra, which I'm really excited for. I think this guy's going to be a great shutdown guy. 
Hopefully he can develop some X factors as well. But usually top fours that are that high of an overall in the draft don't uh, develop that well. But holy crap, this guy looks cool. Okay. He's actually got like the Pavel Dimitri hairstyle almost in a sense too, which is kind of funny. But obviously a different race. Interesting. I was not picturing him to look like that. So hopefully he's a good shutdown defenseman, block some shots, that type of thing. And then we don't have any new goalie this year. Uh, Dave Cameron's back up from the AHL. Let's go to the AHL quickly and look at some of our new players. So uh, McLaren's back for another year. Who else we got here? Pitten's down in the AHL now. We already saw Watton last year. Gallagher's new. Let's see what Gallagher is looking like. Is he going to look like a stud? His name's Jaro. <laughs> oh, he looks pretty basic. Does he have a beard for the playoffs? Yes, he does. Also, wild man beard. Huh. Apparently, we got a bunch of wild men. And no, I did not customize DHL. That's why it looks like just basic bland jerseys. Uh, Voloshenko was another one, right? Yes, he was. Okay. Thought so. These guys being 20 years old before they make their debut is a little bit concerning, but as long as they become decent AHLers, hopefully they could help some future guys develop. He's just got a normal beard. That's what Voloshenko looks like. Number 88. Might take after Patrick Kane that way. Anybody else that I want to take a look at? Gortz, who was our last pick, right? Yeah, our seventh round pick in the exact same spot that Sheroff was drafted. How is he looking? How is he looking? Mikhail Gortz. Very basic. <laughs> also has a little bit of a beard. And I think that is almost it for players that we drafted this episode, right? I think. Uh, there's just Wolniski left. Let's see what Wolniski is looking like. But yeah, drop your predictions down below on uh, how much points you think like Ahan and Wilm and Lehman will put up this season. So I am very curious on that. Okay, he's got partial facial hair. Nothing too special. Except for the red skates with Wolniski. So that is that. And that's going to do it, guys, for this episode of our Halifax Raiders Draft Decoder Franchise Mode. So in next episode, we'll simulate all year four. It should probably be our best season yet. We'll see how Ahanen can fit in with this team. And hopefully we get some more X-Factor development with this team. And some of those other guys like that second line, hopefully they have a good season. Like I know... Uh, Bonagorovsky getting less ice time and not playing with the top guys. He's probably due for a fall off, but he honestly could have a pretty solid second season after that. So let me sing that below, and I'll see you guys next time.